Now I'm going to talk about uh, ovarian masses uh, during pregnancy. Ovarian masses. Now it's, uh, we can consider this topic uh, a key topic uh, because we have been scanning our pregnant uh, women since the beginning of pregnancy and therefore the detection of uh, several lesions at the beginning of pregnancy um, could raise some uh, suspicion. What about uh, the prevalence? Is it an important prevalence, important disease, malignancy, I mean? I selected two prospective studies uh, to tell us what is uh, the prevalence of ovarian masses, what is the risk of torsion, what is the, t the risk of malignancy in a general population. So these two studies were conducted in London, the first one by Condus and the second one by Yazab. They collected, uh, look at, let's look at the first one, 3,000 pregnant women, they considered uh, complexes or cysts with at least a diameter of 2.5 centimeters and the prevalence was 6%. Then uh, they followed up these patients and they observed a 86% resolution. What about the risk of torsion of surgery during pregnancy? 4% underwent surgery because of pain and torsion was confirmed only in one. Regarding surgery, looking at the histology, only one borderline case, case and the other were benign. Let's look at the other experience, other 300 pregnant women. Again, the prevalence of uh, some kind of cyst worth uh, to, to follow up during pregnancy, 8%. And similar percentage of resolution. Two cases underwent surgery because of pain, but no torsion and 33 underwent surgery, and the diagnosis was benign in all cases. So we could say, okay, out of 6,000 patients, only one borderline case. So why are we talking about this issue, malignancy and so on? It's so rare. It is, it is rare, but it's something relevant to be considered. So, one out of uh, 25,000 pregnancy, and uh, looking at the paper by Hoover, if we look at the ovarian masses surgically removed during pregnancy, here you can see the different benign histology, and among 3% of them were carcinomas, 3% borderline ovarian tumors. Now, I wanted to scan, to look at some cases with you. On one side, some ovarian masses, uh, they show the same features during pregnancy as well as before out of pregnancy. For instance, their moids. We didn't notice any particular changes uh, during pregnancy. Similarly, some other very suspicious ovarian lesions for instance, bilateral solid tumors, like in this lady. Bilateral, very well vascularized. In this patient, I always mention the history, the story, because um, I was uh, scanning with the Luca Savelli in Rome, and uh, as soon as we detected uh, these two lesions, we shared, oh no this can be a metastatic tumor. So we interrogated the woman and um, regarding some stomach uh, pain uh, or uh, about uh, the last uh, mammography and so on. And she told us, actually, I observed a very enlargement of the breast, uh, but uh, my gynecologist uh, told me that is, it's normal during pregnancy and it's normal, but when we looked at the situation, we said this is not normal. So 
the final diagnosis was a lymphoma. So she underwent chemotherapy, and after two, three weeks of treatment, the um, pregnancy spontaneously uh, interrupted. So after chemotherapy, as you can see, the two big ovarian lesions became in this way, so quite normal ovaries after chemotherapy. And luckily, also the situation of the breast. So lymphoma. Lymphoma, similar features outside pregnancy as during pregnancy. Another terrible case was this one, a huge solid mass, which turned out to be a Krukenberg. And um, yes, the prognosis of the patient was very, very poor. Another tragedy was uh, this one, bilateral solid ovarian mass. Um, they turned out to be metastases from small lung cell carcinomas. In this year, we published, we wanted uh, a certain moment to collect all the malignant cases we scanned, we examined, we treated during pregnancy, and uh, this is our experience. So, the vast majority borderline, two mucinous borderline, seven invasive, and five metastatic tumor. This is a, an experience in one referral center for gynecological cancer. And uh, in this experience, we simply observed that uh, ultrasound features uh, were very similar to those described in non-pregnant patients, the features of this category. But there is a particular category worth to describe into details, ovarian masses with papillary projections. In uh, several years ago, I observed, I scanned this lady, and I suggested uh, surgery because I noticed this uh, enlarged, vascularized papillary projection. And uh, she, the lady underwent surgery, and the final histology was decidualized endometriomas. At that time, I have to admit that I wasn't aware about the possibility of this entity. But since that time, we went on and we collected uh, several other cases, uh, and we noticed uh, that uh, there is a, a common uh, appearance of these lesions. So during, from that point, we went on with our experience case reports uh, and uh, to multicenter studies on uh, this issue. In particular, we started with this multicenter effort to collect those cases who underwent surgery during pregnancy, and the final diagnosis at histology was decidualized endometriomas. You can look at the panel, and you can see that they share, these images share a similar morphology again unilocular solid with the papillary projections, but in particular, the shape of the papillary projection is smooth, rounded, and very well vascularized. So we started discussing, oh, how can we manage these patients? Are we absolutely sure that they are benign? Because in most cases, the colleagues around the world they suggested the surgery because of uncertainty about the histological findings. So at that moment, we said, OK, we can be quite sure that if we already scan the patients before pregnancy or at the beginning of pregnancy, and we know that she had a typically endometrioma, whenever we can see papillary projection growing during pregnancy, we can reassure the lady and we can tell her it is decidualization. In the past years, we went through some very strange cases, but we were so sure about our diagnosis. And for instance, in front of this lady, it's, very, it's not so easy to say, don't care, 
it's benign, please go on, look at the vascularization. But I did. I did, and as you can see, during the third trimester, there was a complete resolution. In order to answer how can we differentiate a papillary projection in pregnancy, how can we differentiate decidualization, borderline, and invasive, we run this second study, and uh, we collected uh, only ovarian masses with papillary projections, surgically removed during pregnancy, and this is the distribution. We found uh, three invasive ovarian tumors. I want to just to open another parenthesis uh, talking about endometriosis because uh, so far it has not been published something about deep endometriosis. But what happened to me? While scanning this lady, I observed that in the pouch of Douglas there was uh, this um, echoic tissue. And it was not very easy to be sure about uh, the nature of this tissue because uh, Hyperchoic tissue on the peritoneal surface can be quite suspicious for carcinomatosis. But because I was quite confident, quite confident about the decidualization of the ovarian lesion, I said, oh, it could be decidualization of the nodule there. And what convinced me to go on not to operate this patient is the elasticity. Do you see, when I push my probe, it's not so firm, so hard, as I experience when there is carcinomatosis. When you push against a, a, a nodule of carcinomatosis, you are not able to modify it in this way. So, I suggested not to operate this lady, and after delivery, the ovary was this one, and what about the nodule of carcinomatosis? The peritoneum of the pouch of Douglas was absolutely free. No nodule. Okay, this is my story. I want to conclude with, a through, with a three new recent cases, recent cases. Let's start with this one. Before pregnancy, this lady uh, had uh, this scan this image at transvaginal scan. So unilocular cyst with the grand glass appearance, and that's it. At 12 weeks gestation, we observed this type of uh, solid component inside and so on. She went on, and at 24 weeks, uh, we observed a, a sort of increase, but we decided to wait this was uh, at 37. As you can observe here, there is a sort of shrinkage. It's not so tense, so dilated. A sort of shrinkage. And at postpartum examination, completely disappearance of uh, the papillary projections. And so it turned out to be endometrioma because later on she was operated on. So. In this lady, we can focus on these three steps. Actually, I would also add the, um, the examination of the 37th week because it is determinant to me. So nothing in the second trimester, the largest uh, presence of solid component, a sort of shrinkage during the third trimester, and very often, the disappearance of papillary projection after birth. Second case, very beginning at eight weeks gestation, this uh, multilocular solid with a solid component of nine millimeters. At uh, 24 weeks, uh, we didn't observe a real enlargement in terms of uh, dimensions and vascularization. And in postpartum examination, the lesion was absolutely similar. She underwent surgery, and this one turned out to be a mucinous endocervical type. Then we will comment later. Case number three, 
39, so a little bit older. Five weeks at the very beginning, the detection of a unilocular solid disease with a several papillary projection. Uh, vascularization, yes, not so rich vascularization during surgery. And uh, uh, within the team, she was counseled to undergo surgery, and it turned out to be a serious borderline ovarian tumor. Um, I didn't mention the frame, the best frame time to perform surgery, that is uh, 16, 17 weeks gestation, because you have to avoid the first trimester, and it's better to do that before 20, 19, 20, because after that, it's, almost, it's very, very difficult to manage laparoscopically. Fourth case, so 41, nulliparous woman. She had a strong desire of fertility, very strong desire of fertility. So we scanned this lady at 14 weeks. So we detected a unilocular solid cyst with the papillary projection. So we were quite confident at that time. So we invited the lady to come back again in a few weeks. At this time, I was really very concerned. I can't tell you why. Was it because of these um, anechoic areas next to this papillary projection? I can't tell you. I should be so strong in my decision because I collected so many decidualized cases, but I wasn't so confident. So, but in any case, I cancelled the patient. I told her it can be decidualized endometrioma, but I cannot assure. And she told me, listen, I decide this pregnancy so much, I don't want to do nothing at all. Okay, but please come in in one month. So I scanned the lady again, and you see the transformation little by little. Again, counseling with the lady, she decided not to do nothing. So, at 37 weeks of gestation, instead of a shrinkage of the lesion, we observed a further enlargement and uh, an increase of the solid component, number of papillary projections, and so on. We discussed uh, whether to do cesarean section before or not. Uh, she strongly wanted to sp spontaneous uh, deliver. During postpartum, again, instead, instead of a shrinkage, a further enlargement, she underwent surgery, and it turned out to be a clear cell ovarian cancer, stage one. So I presented uh, these cases uh, during the past ISO Congress in Singapore, and um, during the discussion, Beryl, um, did this observation that I found it quite useful because she said, don't you think, Antonia, that we could say that whenever we observe a papillary projections at the very, very early stage of pregnancy could be a sign of something different from decidualization? And I said, oh, you're right. Indeed, do you remember this case who underwent surgery? Okay, several papillary projections, no changes at the very beginning of uh, pregnancy. It turned out to be a um, borderline. So, I did, um, I did my effort to prepare a sort of scheme. Where am I at the moment? What do I know after these, uh, all these years uh, dealing with the variant cyst? At the moment, I would say that if I scan a lady here, and I find a unilocular solid cyst, which are my considerations. Okay, I look at the number, size, and the shape, and vascularization. For sure, for sure. If I know that the lady had a previous endometrioma, I would cancel the patient in favor of a probable decidualized endometrioma, and I, um, my idea, I, I would expect a shrinkage in the third trimester. 
different and uh, very often the disappearance of papillary projection after birth. If we don't have any scan, it's an incidental finding during pregnancy, it's very, very difficult to make any comments. If uh, we detect uh, several small papillary projections at the very beginning of pregnancy, and we do not observe any modification during pregnancy, perhaps they correspond to borderline ovarian tumors. It's just my observation. I, didn't, I don't have in my hands so many data to provide you. And the last one, if we have papillary projection at the very beginning, we observe the enlargement here we cannot be sure, but this is the critical moment to plan surgery. But for sure, if you don't see any shrinkage but an enlargement, you have to make a suspicion of invasive tumor. So, my conclusion. Ovarian masses detected during pregnancy. According to the two studies uh, on uh, general population, we can say that uh, we can expect a resolution in uh, several cases. The risk of torsion is very rare, according to those cases. I, had, uh, I collected uh, some cases, several cases, uh, solid tumor, bilateral tumor, with the similar characteristics as outside, and they turned out to be malignant. And we discussed about unilocular solid cyst, so high prevalence of decidualization. I mentioned the shape, rounded, smooth, richly vascularized. Usually, in case of decidualization, you can see the increase in size during the second trimester, shrinking during the third trimester, and very often the disappearance after pregnancy. And I really thank you for your attention.